This Cowboys mailbag is made possible by Manscaped. You can get 20% off and free shipping on all of their top-of-the-line men's grooming products when you use promo code COWBOYS over at manscaped.com. We have some super thanks to get to here from Mighty Ant 215 All the super thanks came in before uh, the... Um, the, before the news of Zach Martin's deal, so keep that in mind here. He's not hurt. He was just holding out, but the holdout is over, and we're all very excited about it. Andres Ybarvo, $5. This again was before the preseason game. Says, let's get ready to rumble. The Huzz Bears are back. We had an awesome week one preseason watch party. Hope you have to have you guys all back again uh, as we will have a late night kick, 10 p.m. Eastern time kick. Make sure you guys are tuned in. John C. Hinkle just says, thanks. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. If you're going, what the hell is a super thanks? It's not a super chat. You're right, it's not. It is a way to donate outside of live videos. Anyone who does it, we will give you a shout out because we appreciate your support here at the Cowboys Report because you guys are the absolute best. C.J. DeYoung III said, well said. We have the offense and defense not running over each other. Background context here, I had said, you probably want in training camp the offense to win some and the defense to win some because that means you don't just have one bad unit out there pretty much. And that's what's been going on so far in camp. Offense wins some, defense wins some. It's a positive thing in the end for the Cowboys. So CJ Young, thank you very much. From Joseph Rodriguez, I say call Gabe Berksick, hell of a kicker. Uh, Berksick's been on an interesting path. That is, he was really good at, at Oklahoma. Uh, you guys remember producer Sam, he loved it. Um, but he had two chances last year. Vikings and Packers got cut from both. Has not been signed since then. Uh, I would suspect the NFL is not in love with what he is at this stage. That's not to say that Brandon Aubrey is the solution for the Cowboys at kicker, although he is the leader in the clubhouse despite missing an extra point in week one. So what do you think when it comes to the Cowboys kicker? Is Brandon Aubrey the answer and the solution this year? Y for yes, N for no. It is today's pinned comment. If the ad comes here on YouTube, cool. Take advantage of it. Head down there and go vote. From CD's Nuts, dumb question. Why not tire into left guard like an aging uh, corner goes to safety? It does happen sometimes. Uh, offensive line play, I think, tends to deteriorate more quickly than cornerback play. The safety play does. I remember, like, Leon Hall found a new career at safety with the Bengals a few seasons ago or uh, many seasons ago. I think for offensive line, there is some correlation to new position equals injury. I kind of saw it was Zach Martin. It's just a different, different movement pattern, you know? I think the Cowboys have enough concerns about injury for Tyron Smith that adding another change maybe isn't the best thing for him. Abja Pawar, I think that Malik Davis or Deuce Vaughn would be good receiving back options for Dak like James White, Shane Vereen were for Brady. I definitely think Deuce Vaughn can be that guy. I would like to see Rico Dowdle, based on what we saw in the first preseason game, uh, get some more chances there too. Plus, he's a pretty good pass protector, relatively speaking, to other backs across the NFL. Where it's it's kind of bad. That's why a lot of them just run routes. It's easier. Uh, I'd say Dowdle, maybe. Vaughn, absolutely. Davis, I need to see a little bit more. Chris B. Hyped Zach Martin is back and it's behind us. Time to win, baby. You think we have Zach for just two more years, then he retires. Wouldn't be surprised. I think two years is a good over-under figure for Martin. His contract would be up. He'll have some dead money at the back end, but you know that's not a big deal because you do it with everybody and you, then you don't have to, ever have to pay it. Just pushes out in the future forever. Uh, I think that's a good over-under. Wouldn't be surprised. Let's see how he plays, though. If he keeps playing well and the Cowboys are close, Maybe he'll keep running it back kind of like Jason Kelsey has for one more year. $5 for Brett Stevens. How come the talking heads didn't, uh, didn't call out Trevor Lawrence pick like, like they would Dak? It's the Jags. No one cares. Trevor Lawrence w was the first overall pick. He's really good. Everyone knows that because he's the first overall pick. That's, that's how it works. Uh, there's presumed, uh, you know, assumed talent that goes on being a top pick. And if you look at the way some QBs are treated, the most common theme is where they were drafted. They tend to get a little bit more hate if they were drafted later than they were early. It's also why Sam Darnold is on shot number four, despite like never being good in the NFL, and will somehow be good for Shannon, and it'll break my heart again. Uh, but look, it, there's a double standard to get to the nitty gritty here. 
and it's unfair to Prescott and other quarterbacks around the NFL. Today's show is made possible by Manscaped. You guys can get 20% off and free shipping on everything Manscaped makes, including the Performance Package 4.0, the Lawn Mower 4.0, the best when it comes to men's grooming products. That's manscaped.com, promo code COWBOYS for 20% off and free shipping. The Lawn Mower 4.0, the Weed Whacker 2.0, uh, ball conditioner, ball deodorant as well because it can get a little bit smelly up there, can definitely get a bit smelly downstairs. Manscaped.com, promo code COWBOYS. Oh, and also, the most comfortable boxers known to mankind. The link for that is in the comments section, and it's also in the description of today's show. $2 from DeLunatic. Austin Richards, possibly our backup left tackle, DC for life. We'll see. I was impressed by him in that first game. I think he needs some more time. Um, I, I, think, I think in reality, Ty, or Tyler Smith is your backup left tackle, but I bet Richards makes this team. From Matthew, is Donovan Wilson going to be ready for a week? Remember, he had the injury in the beginning. wasn't sure about him. The initial timeline should be good to go for week one. We're not going to see him in the preseason. I'd say check in in two weeks with where he's at. If you see him start getting some like cord work and some one-on-one -on -one work and stuff, means he's making progress. It, you know, it's August. He's a veteran. He doesn't, he's on a second year. He's a veteran now. You don't need to rush him back. So I think they'll be patient, but I bet he plays week one. CD's nuts, nuts, Turpin versus Smith Aoko, Brooks no show. Brooks was quiet in that first uh, playoff game or preseason game, excuse me. Some miscommunications there. I, I don't know if it was a bad throw uh, from Will Greer that was behind Brooks a few times, if Brooks ran the wrong route or, or what. Uh, Turpin had the fumble too. I think all three guys fighting for two spots right now. Let's see what else happens. I think I thought Faoko played better. But you know, he's still got to show more than just some quick underneath easy stuff, too. From Dylan, would you trade for Jonathan Taylor? I mean, Deuce Vaughn's better. Kidding, kidding. Taylor's better. Uh, but I don't, the Colts and Taylor having this weird, like, he's hurt. No, he's not. He's hurt. No, he's not. He's injured. It's just like a weird thing. He wants a massive contract. And I'm not interested in giving Jonathan Taylor a, you know, $13 million per year deal when I'm paying Tony Pollard too, and the Colts want him back to win football games. He's a great runner, don't get me wrong. So was Zeke when the Cowboys paid him, and that deal kind of blew up in the Cowboys' faces. So I, I would not be surprised uh, if the Cowboys found a way to, to add a veteran back. It's not going to be Ezekiel Elliott, but I don't think a big name like Taylor is going to be the option there. All right. The Cowboys running back depth chart right now fits, sits, sits like this. It's Tony Pollard is RB1, Rico Dowdle is RB2, Deuce Vaughn is RB3-ish, 2A, 2B, 2C with Malik Davis in there. Taylor, you can argue, is better than anyone on, on that roster, maybe than anyone combined. But the opportunity cost of the investment contract-wise and the opportunity cost of the overall deal of trading for him, I don't think makes that much sense from that perspective. Would you trade for Jonathan Taylor? Sound off. T for trade, P for pass. Get your votes in for me in the comments section. What would you do? T for trade or P for pass? I'm, I'm saying pass myself. Delunatic, odds Dowdle is RB2 and Overshown is fire. Uh, I am hyped about DeMarvin Overshown right now. I was really impressed by him. I kind of want Deuce Vaughn to be RB2, but I put Dowdle as the favorite right now with like maybe 40% chance, maybe a bit higher. Uh, so decent odds on that front. $10, for, $10 from Carl Coleman. Cowboys will be good if Dak gets out of his own way. I'd say they'd be good uh, if, the, if the receivers would just catch the, the football. They were also still really good last year. It's just can you go from the fifth best team, the third best team, to the first best team? tough race to climb. You need Buck, or you need Bucks playoff game, Dak, than the Niners when you've had the past few seasons. That is, by the way, Carl's first super chat ever here on the show. Two claps for Carl. <laughs> Close enough there, Chris. Hit that sub button if you haven't already as we approach 159K 
Damn near a thousand new subscribers from the watch party preseason week one alone. Thank you all so much. If you haven't already and you want free Cowboys videos every single day, hit that sub button right now, right here on the Cowboys Report. Turner Boys by Dak Prescott. Do you agree if the Dak played in all 17 games last year, CeeDee would have finished top three in receiving yards? I think he would have been close to it. Um, a lot of really good players. I, I will say this too. I think Lamb on his own took some more steps forward. Um, just in terms of like becoming a better player that more coincided with Dak return than like Dak alone elevating him. Uh, so I wouldn't be shocked by it. I promise you that. From Tyler, do you think DeMarvian can be a uh, can be like Micah 2.0? Both were a coverage or a coverage linebacker in college. That was Patrick's experience, but Overstone is supposed to like Micah and a willing tackler. I would say for every player that you think can be the next Micah 2.0, you're just going to be disappointed. Uh, I think Micah is a unique player in the NFL who was a, a play. The Cowboys didn't know he was going to be a star pass rusher. They didn't know that. They got lucky there. If Overshone can be a good linebacker, I'll be very happy. From Daniel Moriarty, I was concerned with the kicking situation last week in the Auburn's Texas State. I don't think he's the answer kicker. I don't think it has much to do with the Texas na native aspect. I think it comes down to, hey, can he be reliable for you? And if it's not, I think someone's going to get cut around roster cut down time. That will be the solution there. Hell, maybe it's Jake Moody, who everyone wanted and missed his first two kicks for the, for the 49ers. From Peter, which rookies need to be the biggest difference maker to help push to, I think it just mean which rookies need to be the difference, biggest difference, difference maker there. Um, look, I think in terms of making the next step forward, being a better team overall, ideally your early round picks, right? Mozzie Smith, I think it, it, he needs to make a bigger impact in not just being a run clogger as the year goes on. Be patient. I think he will get there. Anton Irwin, what rookie looked the best versus the Jags? And I'm, I'm not going to say Deuce Vaughn, but yes, he's up there. Uh, five guys that stood out to me. DeMarvi and Overshown, I thought, played great. Looked way more confident in his reads out there. Deuce Vaughn, we've been hyped about him. I thought Isaiah Land played really well, drew a few holding penalties. Uh, John Stevens, the tight end, uh, was really impactful. And if he keeps that up, maybe he forces his way onto the roster, potentially. And I thought Austin Richards was maybe your best offensive lineman in that game. So what rookie are you most excited about? Sound off for me in the comment section right now. What rookie, drafted, undrafted, early round, late round, whatever it is, what rookie are you guys most excited about? Sound off for me in the comment section right now.